for today is quite familiar to, if not all, some of us because he was with us on the second session and it's so nice of him to be with us again today. So with, um, he is a digital tire trainer and he is a youth empowerment advocate and skills development trainer with an extensive background in youth development and engagement. Char used to lead Youth Vote Philippines as the coalition lead convener and spokesperson in both 2016 and 2019 national elections. Currently, he focuses his engagement on freelance works, particularly on content development and content management. He used to work as, a, as the former program manager for the ASEAN Youth Community, communications manager for Weigel Incorporated, president of Philippine Leadership at Empowerment Alliance for Development Incorporated, and he is currently one of the skills development trainers for Facebook Digital Tayo Campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our speaker for today, Mr. Chard Amazona. Sorry, take it away. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss May, and good morning to all our viewers for this morning. So again, as mentioned um, by Miss May, today is actually our last uh, module for for the day, and we are hoping that you would be able to enjoy more of our discussions ngayong umaga. At matutuwa nga kami dahil nga um, this would be a good discussion point for all of us dahil mahalaga na pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw itong tinatawag natin na pagiging maingat, being part of our... Ano nga ba yung pag-uusapan natin? Ano ba yung digital footprint? Ano nga ba yung kailangan nating malam para mas lalong maging maayos ang ating pakikisalamuha no? so with, with our online community. And as mentioned uh, with previous um, sessions as well, diba? Um, we're always saying then that this is actually an initiative no, for Digital Tayo from Facebook, wherein we wanted to build a community responsible for being a responsible digital citizens. And as part of our commitment to really build a global community, we wanted to really build on awareness. No? When we talk about awareness, it, it also includes developing learning modules, providing you global resource for, for that matter. And Shempre, we wanted to also educate you guys, to educate all of us, educate um, Filipinos to really be part of the movement. No? As part of um, being program partners, we are actually doing a lot of workshops and training sessions. And it actually came from different um, processes, no? from thought leadership, outputs from the different steering committee, as well as digital voices. And here in the Philippines, our main effort is to always focus on these three things, building awareness, learning modules, and resources. Mm -hmm. And with that, we actually partnered with a number of organizations and collaborators who are actually moving forward to create a community of digital citizens. Ne? So at this case, we would like to thank, of course, the Department of Information and Communications Technology, especially with um, Mindanao Cluster One for always providing this kind of enabling space for all of us, especially right now that we are still no, um, facing uncertainties because of the calamity that we are facing right now. But beyond that, what we are looking forward is that hindi tayo hihinto because of this uh, kind of struggle, but rather we wanted to really push through with conversations, providing you with a lot of learning outputs and training outputs as well that will allow us to really improve ourselves while we are actually staying in the comforts of our homes. Okay, naman with our offices, especially that majority of the communities in the Philippines right now, it's either in GCQ already or the MGCQ. And with that, no, um, again, let just recap then, no? Um, as part of our discussion for the past weeks already, when we talk about digital citizen, no, a person is actually considered as a digital citizen when someone or he or she is actually confidently using digital technologies to understand information online and interacting positively with others. So ibig sabihin, when we talk about someone who uses platforms such as Facebook, such as Zoom as well, we consider them as part of the digital citizen. And ano nga ba yung kailangan nating pagandaan when we talk about this kind of things? And how to be really a responsible digital user? So when we wanted to create a, when we want to create a safe online environment, we are actually focusing now on this discussion, which is paging maingat, 
and which mainly focuses more on our digital footprint. And ano nga ba yung kailangan nating malaman as part of our discussion for this morning? Number one, we will be talking about what is actually a digital identity. So, syempre, when we talk about digital identity, everything, all that we post, enter, and share using the internet actually becomes part of our digital identity. And aside from that, syempre, dahil nga nagiging parte na ng discussion ngayon, dahil sa parte ng ating new normal, is how can we actually protect our digital identity? So dito pag-uusapan natin how do we adjust our privacy settings and how we would be able to reflect on what should we need to do or what should not be done when we are actually posting online. So this time, we will be talking about our tracks online. At sa mga kapasok, ako po ulit si Chart Amazona. And we will be also lo uh, looking at, at the possibility of when we talk about tracks online, di ba? everything that we actually put in in the internet becomes part of our digital footprint. No? And our tracks online can be any behavior that we do online. So something such as posting videos, posting comments, as well as sharing contents, then it also leaves a mark depending on how we manage our information. So always remember when we talk about our tracks online, our digital footprint, everything that we do in the internet becomes part of our digital footprint. And with that, it is very important that we learn Ano ba yung mga sinishare natin? Ano ba yung information that we share about ourselves? And sino-sino dito yung merong mga access in terms of those information? So for example, diba, uh, the things that we are actually posting online includes profile and our personal information. Some of us puts our birthday as well as our pictures. And syempre sometimes diba, as part of our connecting or connection with other communities or our groups, we are putting in our names as well as our designations kung saan man tayo nag work Especially right now, that in the new normal, everything is uh, already in the online platform. So some of us, or majority of us, na working online already. And with that, we would be able to see na we are actually sharing part of our discussion, part of our self. And aside from that, Part ng ating share online about ourselves includes the new posts natin. Diba? Especially as we prepare for things like this in the future, most of us are actually posting some of our messages, especially if we are actually part of certain digital uh, groups. So meron kayong, if you're a business owner, meron kayong access with respect to your customers, or if you are an employee on a certain organization or from government, we are actually utilizing the Facebook groups as part of our uh, communication. And part of our sharing of ourselves, siyempre, yung mga contents that we do share and we do like. Diba? At mahalagang tandaan natin that all of these things, the personal information that we are sharing, the posts that we are sharing, messages as well as contents that we share and like, the people who have access on it are actually our online friends and our relationships. Diba? And when we do that, diba, kung may kita natin sa Facebook friends natin, some of us will already have more than 3,000. Some of us have already 5,000 um, friends already. So everything that we post publicly is actually seen by our friends and relationships, our online friends. And when we do that, Meron ding different ways on actually accessing information about us. So something such as the images, our social media accounts. Syempre, yung, yung school natin, di ba? Um, when we were still studying, some of them have access with our information. Lalo na yung mga uh, birth certificate. Some of us are actually providing them before. As well as, syempre, for job and job Natin, job opportunities, our employers have copies of our curriculum vitae and our resumes. Diba? And if we are actually active in social media, especially now online, kung meron tayong mga normal interviews and normal engagements such as this, it becomes part of our footprint. So new stories can be 
ways that other people or the public would be able to know about us. And crucial right now is our community or social group. So if we join a number of groups, professional engagement or professional development, especially during lockdown in the previous months, syempre sumali tayo with the different groups. So more importantly, the, the, the things that we post online or the things that we joined with respect to groups or information that is actually about us can be accessed by the public when we put it in public. And as part of our digital footprint as well, the goal for this morning discussion is to really consider or ask the question, how are we able to protect our digital identity? Diba? Para sa mga kapasok lamang po this morning, just a recap, when we talk about our digital footprint, our digital footprint is everything or, or anything that we post online, share online, react online. And kakaakibat po ng discussion ng ating digital footprint is really protecting our digital identity. And alam natin, there are different ways in terms of we shop. Diba? Like for example, here in Metro Manila, there is actually a difficulty in going out, lalo na kung weekends, because kung magsha-shopping or mag-grocery, masyadong mahaba yung pila. So, so some of the innovators that we have right now already developed different platforms, such as online shopping. Diba? So some of us, hindi na kailangan lumabas ng bahay, we can actually shop online, and then i-deliver na lang sa atin. And part of our work, especially for those who are in the government sector, is to really inform our public. Therefore, isang malaking question is really protecting our digital identity. So this time, let us now talk about how we can secure our information online. So just to share with you this morning, we have three ways to protect our digital identity or your digital identity. So number one is really choosing the content that you show to other people. Siyempre, part din ng ating protecting our online uh, personality is be wary of abusive content. Diba? There are contents na minsan because we like a certain page or a certain group or we join with a certain group, meron tayong manikita ng mga contents that sometimes affects us as we perform our uh, daily functions. So... Take note that we need to be wary of our abusive content, especially if it's affecting our mental health. Mahalaga na we are always doing this kind of things. And that's actually part of our ways to really protect our digital identity. And syempre, when we talk about our online presence, when we talk about our digital identity, our dig digital footprints, kaakibat din dito yung securing our respective accounts. So pag-uusapan natin yan for this morning. So number one, just to give a uh, dig deeper with our discussion, first is choosing the content that we show to other people. Always remember that as part of an online community, always, always, ayan, hindi, tadaan po natin when we talk with a number of people, when we engage with them online. Please do take note that it is very important to be on our authentic self. Let us not use fake names or profiles Kasi it will ano, mislead other people into believing na ay hindi pala kayo totoo. No? And as part of the new normal, kailangan nating masanay at maging ad adapted with respect to our environment. Hence, it's very crucial that we consider our online profiles as authentic as possible. And syempre, when we talk about con um, choosing the content that we show to people, it is very important that we know different ways to report. If we feel that the content is affecting our mental health, uh, the content is affecting our professional lives or personal lives, so please do do not forget to use the report uh, functions on the different platforms. And syempre, as a reminder to all of us, parang, di ba, kung dati, the normal things that we do when we attend conferences, when we connect, when we network with a number of people or a lot of people, we always choose our friends wisely. So, dito din sa online platform, meron din tayong ganong capability. That is by way of really adding or accepting friend requests. And syempre, kaakibat din ng pag-accept ng friend requests, eh syempre yung pag-unfriend, unfollow, or block. 
So when we unfriend people, it, it only means that we don't want to be connected with them anymore. And if we unfollow, syempre, it only means that we don't want to, really, to see yung mga posts din ng mga tao that we unfollowed. Or sometimes if we feel or if the account or person is really affecting us, we need to block them. No? And syempre, uh, as a reminder as well, when we choose our friends, kaakibat din dito is choosing our audience wisely. So as a um, reminder to all of us, please do be careful with what we share online. Ngayon, maraming Pilipino ang laging nagtatanong, kailangan ko bang i-share lahat ng nakikita ko social media? Sa social media, again, kailangan natin maging ano, critical thinker when we do those things. Kasi there are groups or certain people that will use different information just to affect you as well. Kaya mahalaga that when we post anything or contents online, we also need to check with our audience. Ito bang content na ito should be given publicly? Or ito bang content na to should be filtered with our friends only? Or our personal connections? Or certain groups that we are connected with? So mahalagang tandaan natin yan when we talk about choosing the content that we show to the public or the people as well. And always remember in Facebook, meron tayong tinatawag na Facebook Community Standards. So kung meron tayong sa government um, employees, di ba meron tayong civil service rules that governs us as when at when we do our platforms or when we do our functions in our everyday work. And for those people naman who are employed in the private sector, we have what we call the uh, code of conduct. And in Facebook, meron din tayo yan. Sa Facebook, this is what we call the Facebook Community Standards. So the Facebook Community Standards is our code of conduct or for students who are still um, learning, student handbook yung ka counterpart niya with that matter. And the Facebook Community Standards outline provides us ano ba yung meron at ano ba yung hindi dapat gawin when we are part of the community. And itong mga policies na ito ay inclusive in terms of including different views as well as beliefs, as well as people and communities that might otherwise be overlooked and considered to be marginalized. As we go into the new normal, as we embrace this kind of um, responsibility, mahalaga that we need to be informed of this kind of rules. Siyempre, diba? And if you wanted to know more about it, you can actually check it in with our Facebook um, apps or you can link to www.facebook.com slash community standards. Now, pasok tayo with respect to sanctions, just in case. So again, as part of the Facebook community standards, Facebook is always serious when we talk about removal of content. So if we make hate speech or sometimes um, content, share contents that do not address yung kumbaga, karapatang pantao din ng ating mga viewers or listeners or if not, mga friends natin, it can be considered as a spam, kunwari, diba? it can be removed based on Facebook community standards. Siyempre, kapag uh, nag-violate din tayo ng community standards, mahalaga din that may possibility na kapag repeater po tayo ng mga ganitong mga pag-share ng mga information na hindi totoo, ganyan, o kaya nag nagkaroon tayo ng cyberbullying engagements with our viewers or audience, our account may be compromised. So may be deleted as part of the Facebook community standards. So Facebook is always re-evaluating our respective accounts, including then Instagram as well. Kaya mahalaga that we follow the community standards because we wanted to create an, a positive online community. And second point that we share, we would like to share for this morning is we need to be wary of our abusive um, or be wary of different abusive contents. When, when we talk about abusive contents, we consider things such as yung scamming, or money theft and identity theft. And syempre, yung phishing, yung, di ba, um, recently, as part of our um, social media monitoring, di ba, merong mga Pilipino ngayon, especially who are part of the MSMEs, Micro Small Medium Enterprises, 
who are creating Facebook pages as part of their community profiles, merong ilan din na mga sellers, tayo mismo, di ba? As consumers, minsan may mga nag-send sa atin ng mga scam attempts, di ba? Such as money theft, o kaya minsan magpapakilala na this is the owner or the manager of a certain business. And yung iba naman, we receive different information online through our emails that ask us our personal information or financial information. So tandaan po natin that those kinds of activities should really be ano, um, put priority for all of us. We put premium to our security. Kaya mahalaga na aware tayo. Critical thinking and heightened awareness yung importante when we talk when we can see oh when we meet this kinds of um opportunities sa ating buhay ngayon nasa online platform tayo mahalaga na aware tayo with this one and syempre part din ng when we talk about abusive contents is our power our ano we are actually empowered by the facebook community as well as the social media platforms to really report abusive contents so laging tandaan po natin ang Guidelines lang natin na nakapanoob, especially on Facebook, is can be seen as part of our Facebook community standards. Sa Manitef, just a reminder, diba, ito yung mga pagkakataon when someone asks our bank information to steal our money. O kaya naman, um, identity theft is merong mga tao nagpapakilala that sila daw yun or nagkaroon ng mga accidents or whatnot. So be wary of this kind of contents lang. And syempre, as part of our ways to really protect our digital identity is by securing our respective accounts. So I understand some of us might have different gadgets that we are using for work, some for, um, for personal use. But always remember when we use a number of gadgets, let us practice as part of our normal new normal guidelines for ourselves um, monitoring ay to always secure our login and log out um, functions marami sa atin yung iba na nag attempt siguro dahil syempre ngayon pwede tayong mag kumamit or makihiram ng mga gadgets with our family members sometimes we wanted to check lang our respective emails or social media accounts pero minsan nakakalimutan din natin mag log out So always remember that, okay? Pag hindi po natin pag mamayari yung gadgets or nakikigamit ng tayo like laptops or office laptop or office computer and dahil kailangan yung mag-double check ng posts in social media or mag-check ng yung respective emails, do not forget to always log out your accounts. And syempre, ito. Ito yung isa sa mga problema ngayon ng mga Pilipino. Using stronger passwords or strong passwords. In the previous um, discussions na Kita nyo naman that when we talk about strong passwords or when we talk about stronger passwords, ayan, it's always a combination of numbers, letters, and characters. At mahalaga, when we use Facebook as well, we also use those um, passwords, yung stronger passwords. Because again, dahil nga ngayon, mas lahat tayo ay online na, everything is communicated online, we wanted to protect our accounts. And by way of doing that, is using combinations ng numbers, letters, and characters, either in small caps or big caps. And in Facebook, how do we do that? So when we wanted to really double-check our login and logout alerts, we can check with the application or sa mismong Facebook website as well that we can activate our login alerts. So dito... When we enable our login alerts, we provide ourselves the premium security na kung may biglang mag-access ng hindi natin nalalaman dahil dinecode yung password natin o kaya mahaba yung, uh, magbilis malaman yung password natin, we will be informed about it. So we can check it sa platform. We can enable that after this session. Double check natin. Magkaroon tayo ng, ng pag-review ng ating account. And mahalaga that we also consistently create our security checkup. Sa Facebook, di ba? But once we open our platforms or kapag nag-log out tayo sa accounts natin at nag-log in tayo ulit, there is always a security checkup feature na kung saan it allows us to monitor and protect our accounts. 
So, pwede natin gamitin yan para malaman natin kung meron bang nag-access ng mga accounts natin ng hindi natin nalaman. Okay. So, you can check it uh, later on para mas lalong maging makatotohanan yung pinag-uusapan din natin for this morning. Another thing that you can also protect our account is activating our 2FA. Ang tawag natin dito ay 2FA or in other terms, we call it as two-factor authentication. The two-factor authentication is our another, ano, added security. Kumbaga, binuboost din natin ito yung security natin na just in case hindi tayo makapag-access ng ating ibang platforms or ng ibang ng email, let's say, pwede natin i-activate yung two-factor authentication para as added protection for all of us. Kasi sa 2FA po, we would be able to have that opportunity na kung saan merong magbibigay sa atin ng code if someone is accessing our accounts na hindi registered with na hindi natin inapprove para magdagdag ng security. Ito po yung mga binibigay sa atin na code na kung saan kailangan nating i Nakasunod po. So mahalaga na we take notice kinds of um, tips kasi it will help us protect our digital identity. So going back with creating stronger passwords, make sure lang that we always use combination of small and big letters. And meron tayong different characters. So we maximize the use of numbers. We maximize the use of symbols like punctuation marks. Ayan. Kasi it will also mahirapan yung, ano, yung hacker kung meron man in accessing our respective accounts. And always remember po when we create our passwords, kailangan po at least ngayon ang standard na ay at least eight characters. Eight characters more. Kung more than 8 characters, mas better. Mahirapan yung, yung hacker na madecode yung mismo account natin. And dito, we also protect our self din. Just in case na biglang mabilis. Ito, isang mga normal na ginagawa or nagagawa ng mga Pilipino because masaya tayo sa mga birthdays natin o kaya sa mga apelido natin. Ganyan. We use our surnames or our birthdays as our passwords. So again, always remember, in the new normal, creating stronger passwords means creating safe spaces for all of us. And by doing that is, wag, tayo, ano, wag nating padaliin ang buhay ng mga gustong mag-access ng mga information natin online by giving our birthday and surname and using it as our passwords. Alright? So, as part then ng discussion na natin, um, secondly or thir uh, thirdly, syempre securing our respective accounts. As part ng pag-secure ng account natin ay eh, syempre yung sharing or setting our location privacy. Diba? Yung ilan sa atin, mga Pilipino, kapag ka natutuwa, lalo na kapag ka, ano, kapag ka, pumupunta tayo sa kung saan, nagsishare tayo ng locations natin. So always remember, let us look into that yung location privacy natin, sino lang ba ang dapat makita kung nasaan tayo? Because it, it might add actually danger to all of, uh, all of us. Second is checking our privacy settings. Always, kanina, sinabi ko sa inyo, always remember to conduct privacy checkups. Kung kaya po natin gawin once a month, better. Kung twice a month, mas maganda. Pero kung kaya natin gawing weekly at meron tayong ex, uh, spare time to really check our privacy settings, mas ma maganda po na, ano, na we also put that as part of our schedule. Because that way, hindi tayo mahihirapan na matulog sa gabi just in case merong biglang may gustong mag-hack ng accounts natin. At we, we, ano, we create that safe feature for all of us. And syempre, checking our security settings is very, very, very important. Kasi... Kapag hindi po tayo kalmado o hindi tayo panatag na secure yung mga accounts natin, eh mahirapan tayo pag magkakaroon tayo ng problema in the future. Diba? Eh what if biglang dahil gusto natin mabilis lang or madali lang, eh what if ginamit natin na passwords natin o yung surnames lang natin, eh yun pala nakalink yung account ninyo to your bank accounts, to your online bank accounts, ibang mga online platforms ninyo, eh hindi nyo na ma-access kasi na-open na yung mismong account. So, again, we are 
discussing it because we wanted all of us to be safer this time. And as part of protecting our digital identity, sa mga gustong magkaroon ng more readings as well, we can check our link na www.facebook.com slash about slash basics para magkaroon tayo or follow by following the steps. So you can click dun sa platform natin or sa, sa application natin yung burger icon or yung three lines at the top right hand corner of our Facebook and please do click our privacy shortcuts. So kung hindi nag-prompt nag sa screen nyo yung checking ng ating Facebook privacy check-up, pwede nyo sundan tong ano, tips na to. You can actually, you can actually uh, screenshot with this one para makapag-guide sa inyo later on. So we can also select review a few um, important privacy settings under your privacy section and please do click next and answer the following questions about your settings. So tandaan natin merong mga... Ako, meron akong experience before na kung saan na-hack yung account ko. So, nag-require talaga sa akin to submit documentation such as information para mag-verify. So, wag pong ayaan na mangyari sa inyo yun. Kaya mahalaga that we are advocating this kind of conversations online because it will give us the peace of mind that we want. Especially ngayon na we are facing a pandemic. Right? And another thing that when we talk about privacy checkup, ano ba yung privacy checkup tool na sinasabi natin? So merong different topics na may kita natin sa privacy checkups that you are seeing in your respective screens. And this way, kapag inaral natin to, kapag kabinasa natin to mga bagay na ito, dagdag kaalaman sa atin, we are actually strengthening our account security. So ano ba yung mga account security na yan? Number one, who can see what we share or what you share online? So merong pang public at merong pang close friends at pang merong office um, friends natin or colleagues natin lang ang pwede makakita. Another information na parte ng privacy check up is keeping our account secure. Paano ba tayo yung yan, enabling our passwords, login alerts, yung mga stronger passwords natin, diyan makikita natin yan dito. And how people can find you on Facebook. Okay, ayan. Ito, I would like to emphasize on this now kasi as we go publicly with respect to our respective online accounts, sometimes marami sa atin super public na yung mga accounts. So, if we are maintaining our social media accounts dahil kailangan with our work, pwede po natin galawin yung ating settings na kung saan pwede ang makapag-add lang sa inyo ay friends of friends or your close connections. And syempre, uh, mahalaga din na when we do that, we're actually, Facebook is actually doing a data settings review for all of us. And malaman natin ano ba yung meron tayo as part of our Facebook engagement or, or online engagement. So, bilang ano, reminder lang, please don't forget to take a screenshot with this one. Or sa mga kapasok lang, you can actually review our playback or replay later after we end our session for this morning. But just a reminder, always remember to secure our accounts, make our accounts um, have stronger passwords. Do not forget to enable our login and logout alerts. Activate our login approvals and syempre, log out our unused devices. So ano nga ba yung activating our login approval? So sa Facebook, pag ginamit po natin yan, meron mga pagkakataon na kung saan merong magpa-prompt sa atin kapag hindi familiar yung mismong setting natin. Kumari, nag bumili tayo ng bagong gadget or bagong phone. Ngayon, dun sa phone na yon hindi pala nakadownload pa si Facebook at gusto nating i-access yung account natin. So, magpa-prompt po yung ating account para malaman na ikaw ba itong gumagamit o ikaw ba yung nag a na mag-open ng account. So, dyan po natin magamit yung or maximize yung login approvals. And syempre, yung lag, lagging out naman with our unused devices, kung previously, nakalimutan na natin kung saan accounts ba tayo o kaninong laptop ba tayo or tablet ba tayo nagpumamit, we can actually log out all of those unused devices sa ating security settings. And with that, pwede nating ma-wipe out itong mga information na to na kung saan pwedeng mag-automatic. Pag inactivate natin yung log, uh, logging out of unused devices, automatic po yun pag in-okay natin or in-approve natin 
lahat po ng mga hindi natin uh, ginagamit ng mga devices will automatically log out our accounts. So mahalaga po yan. Okay? Siyempre, as part of our securing our accounts, siyempre, security check up. And if you are having problems in terms of accessing these kinds of information, accessing problems in maximizing and securing your respective accounts, meron naman tayong help button ng Facebook. Ayan. As part of our links, ayan, www.facebook.com slash help. Or you can also check with www.facebook.com slash help. Okay, don't forget lamang po, um, I would like to reiterate when we enter these kinds of links, do not forget to include um, yung security feature which is HTTPS natin na nakikita din sa screens natin. So malaman natin kung secured yung website na pinupuntahan natin kapag ginagamit po natin yung HTTP. Ayan. Tapos yung colon po para ma-access natin sila. Usually pag in-enter po nyo yan, automatic sa desktop or sa laptop ninyo, makikita ninyo yung HTTPS kasi part din ng security protocols yan sa paggamit din ng online platforms. So, ano ba yung mga questions that we can maximize or check doon sa ating Facebook help? So, ano ba yung mga names allowed on Facebook? Are we allowed to use the names of our idols? Yung mga artista na tuwang-tuwa tayo, are we allowed to do that? Again, pwede po natin ma-check yan sa ating Facebook health center. How do I choose or how do we choose for um, what I get notifications about on Facebook? Kapag, kapag ba meron tayong nilike na isang page, automatic na mag-notify sa atin, o ayaw na natin makita yung mga ganitong kind of content, maybe we can actually maximize this by getting notifications sa Facebook accounts natin. Saan ba natin may kita yung Facebook settings natin kung medyo nalilito kayo, nahihirapan kayo how to access our Facebook Facebook platform, we can maximize the Facebook health center. Health center. Okay? Or questions such as, how do we change or reset our Facebook passwords? Pwede po natin malaman yan with our Facebook Help Center. Or meron tayong mga questions such as, why am I seeing an error message saying I can reply to a conversation on Facebook? Oh, so pwede natin tignan yan. So sa platform po natin, pwede natin puntahan yung Help Center na ikili sa screen po ninyo. Diyan po natin ma-access yung mga information about those kinds of questions. Okay? And meron tayong mga frequently asked questions saan na kung saan we will uh, be able to allow ourselves to customize our engagement on that firm na yan. Okay? Next. And as part of our summary, ayan. So, malapit na po tayong matapos for this morning. Tandaan po natin that when we talk about our digital footprint, pagiging maingat, Dalawang bagay lang yung kailangan nating tandaan. Number one, ano ba yung digital identity? Just a recap, our digital identity is anything or everything that we post online, enter and share using the internet. It can be in a form of posting memorandum para sa, or memoranda from the government um, employees or posting um, announcements can be part of our, will always be part of our digital identity o kaya naman sharing yung different content. Katulad niyan, kanina, kanina before we start, Meron mga nag-share ng link how to join our discussion for this morning That's, that becomes part of our digital identity. And, o kaya naman, meron tayong mga uh, questions o kaya yung mga nag good morning, ganyan, or taking into consideration sharing our insights with our discussion for this morning while we are doing it um, online becomes part of our digital identity. And second point lang din when we talk about pagiging maingat our digital footprint is answering the biggest question or the most difficult question of how do we protect our digital identity. And ito, din sa mga ko sa inyo kanina, adjusting our privacy settings and reflecting on what we need to share and not share online or the things that we need to post or not to post. Diba? Kung, kung dati, ang question lang natin ay is it something to say or not to say? This time, parte dapat ng personal check-up din natin ay itong content ba na ito is something that I need to post online. Diba? So, in, 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 uh, in the words of tama ba, um, Shakespeare, to be or not to be. And this time, in our online platform, the question now will be to post or not to post. Ayan. And, or kaya to share or not to share as part of our discussion. And syempre, 
when we are took our uh, we are doing this kind of um conversations katulad ng webinar na ito from the ICT Mindanao Cluster 1 we wanted to really create a safe online environment and by doing that how to be responsible digital uh, user is always a priority for all of us especially from digital tayo team because we wanted you all of us to really reflect on our digital self which is being maingat and our digital footprint is always will always be part of our history na the personal history so let us make sure that we have this kinds of yung insights that I share with you today will be helpful to really maximize our use of social media platforms.